American Warrior Festival, and we have someone I believe some of you recognize. Tim, what would everyone recognize you from? Full Metal Jacket, I guess. That would be the one that would remember me. Oh, the door runner. 25 years ago, every single time somebody says, were you in Full Metal Jacket? Yeah, you're the door runner. I always say, yeah, but I was originally the drill instructor. It takes away from what I really did. You know, I'm very proud of what I did, but at the time, when you have like a, a role that has speaking role for 60 pages with one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, and you have the role for eight months, and they take it away from you, it was difficult for me to handle. Okay, we're going we're gonna go back. You're gonna be telling us, I want this whole story, this is insane. Okay, I didn't want to be an actor. I was based in I was a Marine, I went to Vietnam. I went you to enlisted. Uh, yeah, I listed on my 18th birthday and it was out on my 20th. What when, made you want to enlist Well, at that time, I'm old. I wasn't going in because I was patriotic. I was going in because I had to. So at that time, uh, the Vietnam War was going very strong. Communism was a normal word we were using around in the house. My best buddy was in the Navy and I figured I could go in there and for two years and get over with. But they said, that's for four years. I said, my, my buddy's in the Navy for two years. He said, well, he must have flunked the test. I said, I'll flunk the test. Yeah, you're like, what test can I flunk? He said, you already passed it. What will it be, son? So I looked at the poster and I saw the Navy ship out of the Pacific for four years. I saw the Air Force jet in the sky for four years. I saw this guy in fatigues on the ground with trees around him. Two years, Army. I saw the next poster was Marines. The guy had fatigues in the trees, but he had all this green paint. You could barely see his eyes. I said, I'm going to need that paint if I'm going to be an <laughs> I walked in and I said, what can I do for you? I said, I'm here to take the test. I said, what test? I said, the test to join. He goes, what's this? So it's a pen. You passed. Sign here. I'm in the Marines. Oh, wow. So I go into the Marines in 1969 when the first man on the moon. We had to say a prayer for Neil Armstrong, safe return home July 20th. As a Marine, I was in boot camp looking up saying, Sir, God bless Neil Armstrong. May he have a safe return home. My eyes are good night, girls. I went back to bed. Two months after I've been back from Vietnam, I'm in a college in a fraternity. So it's a completely different feeling. A friend of mine from college said, You got a lot of energy without not acting. I said, Nope, I don't think I'm in. I don't think I'm that kind of guy. I really started liking it. I said, Well, you have a personality, Tim. You can do this. You got to get yourself a role. Two years, if you don't get any money, get out. Yeah. After six months, I started landing some commercials, some pretty big commercials. Commercials is talk loud, articulate what you're selling, and smile. Film is being real and being likable as your character. Like I, One thing I try to teach, even yeah. as, a, as my character in Full Metal Jacket, I'm shooting women and children, although I was a likable guy doing it. Right? And what's interesting about that is Stanley, I thought, was going to bring out all this extra stuff of me as an actor. And he said, don't laugh like that anymore. Give me an everyday killer smile. And I looked at him and I said, because I was a Marine, went to Vietnam, do you think I know what an everyday killer smile is? He said, don't believe all that propaganda. You know, don't worry about it. Just shoot the weapon. I started shooting the weapon. I went, I want to talk. And I did the scene without laughing, just very serious with a little smile. Anybody who runs is a VC. Anybody who stands still is a well-disciplined VC. Well, you got to do a story just like that. He goes, good, Tim, do it 13 more times just like that. I did. Year went by, film got edited, movie came out. Everybody's calling me up, you're in the movie, uh, you're in the trailer. I go, I'm in the trailer, that means I'm in the movie. Because so I had the drill instructor role, they took it away, now I got the door gonna roll, I'm in the movie. Warner Brothers called me up and said, uh, he had a hell of a time putting all your original laughs back in when he wasn't even on the set. And we showed the film last night to 300 Vietnam vets, and he said the best guy in the film was that door gunner. So here it is 35 years later, and people still know my dialogue. I'm so shocked at three and a half minutes, four minutes of me being on, on, on the film that I made that big of an impression. Give him status, too, because the, day be the night before I shot that scene, they said, do your dialogue, and I did it. And he looked at the casting director and goes, you gave him the wrong dialogue to memorize? I wanted to kill somebody. I didn't know. I thought, is he trying to make me crazy to play the role? So by going through all that and then him saying, come with me, and he went to his room and he started typing this dialogue, which was brilliant dialogue. And he said, do this tomorrow. So he wrote that dialogue in 30 seconds, and I made the dialogue memorable. And he was smart enough as a general, as a director, to know that his way wasn't the right way, and whatever I did might work, and it did work. So I'm very proud that... I went through so much ups and downs to get that role, and I'm shocked that it became that memorable. 
Okay, so how did you even find out about the... Oh. So you're already in acting yeah, business. Yeah, and I've done a few commercials. My best know. friend reads in uh, Variety that Stanley Kubrick's filming a Marine Corps film only about the Marines, and you have to send him a tape. And he immediately called me. I, I wrote a movie called The Birth of Pride, My Experiences in the Marines, which I'm going to do some excerpts of that tonight. And he said, this is right for Ali. you got to send a tape. So I sent the tape, and three years went by. I forgot about the tape. Three years later, they called me, and they said, who's this guy you're yelling at? He's brilliant. I go, he's in the Marines. They're not going to let him out to do a Marine movie. He's in for four years. He's got another year left. They found him. They said, we found him on uh, Hermosa Beach, and he's on leave. We want you to direct him through these three scenes and send him back to us. So I got this kid. I said, I told you they might want to use you. And he didn't know how to act. And he had to grab the rifle and go, this is my rifle. There are many like it, but this is mine. And I went, I can't hear you. I just did a couple of those. And I yeah. sent the tape back. I get a phone call three days later from Warner Brothers. Hello, Tim. This is Louis Blau, president of Warner Brothers. Tim, I have a tremendous amount of faith in Stanley Kubrick. Tim, Stanley Kubrick has a tremendous amount of faith in Tim Colseri. And I took the phone and I went, Stanley Kubrick has a tremendous amount of faith in me. I'm in, now I'm in You're London, and Lee Army is marching the guys, and I'm inside memorizing dialogue. Stanley Kubrick didn't care about money or how long. One thing about it. He was with Warner Bros. They came, and he put yellow tape around everything. He went and work until he left. And, the, and the, the big wigs had to put up with that, you know. He was Stanley Kubrick. He was like, it's a hot set. Until yeah, like, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't do no anything until he left. Finally, after three months, they finally they say, you're going to shoot the drill instructor role tomorrow. This is your dialogue. And they put me in a... In a trailer it was like eight degrees outside nobody in the trailer for 12 hours memorizing two sentences oh. and at the end of the day they looked at the camera and they went go and the dialogue was you're about to receive your first marine corps recruit haircut you'll be shaved completely bald if you have a mole a bump a scar or anything else protruding from your head and by protruding i mean anything else sticking up out of your head the minute you sit in that chair plate stop what 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 it's the minute you sit down in that chair and I went down in the chair. I didn't say down, and you're stopping me. So I beat the chair up for like five minutes, and I was sweating. And I went back to the camera and went, you're about to receive your first Marine Corps recruit haircut. You'll be shaved completely bald. If you have a mole, a bump, a scar, or anything else protruding from your head, and by protruding, I mean anything else digging up out of your head, the minute you sit down in that chair, <laughs> place your finger on whatever is on your head and let the barber know by saying, sir, private has a mole on his head. Do you understand? put his arm around me and said, Stanley's going to be impressed. He wants to make sure you can do your dialogue. It took Scatman Crothers 122 takes in The Shining to do, to do his dialogue. And we used to have to break in to the hotel room, and he was hiding behind the curtains. This is the stuff I'm hearing. So I didn't want to lose my role because I couldn't memorize. I didn't want to lose my role because I couldn't act. I didn't want to lose my role at all. And when I lost it, I'm telling you, it's sad that... I went through that because if I would have had the door gonna roll, it'd have been such a beautiful story just to play this great role you and move been on. Happy to have yeah, I've been. I'm still you very happy. The moon and then yeah, away. very happy. So how did it happen? You were already rehearsing. You were about ready to shoot. Stan uh, Lee was gonna yell at some extras, and he videotaped the dialogue. He had it memorized. He had a plan. Okay. To to do this dialogue and then add his own improv dialogue. And Stanley saw the tape and thought, this guy's great for this role, and I need a door gunner role. Tim plays the door gunner. He'll play the drill instructor. And uh, wrote me the letter, Dear Tim, after a lot of painful, a lot of deliberation, I decided to use Lee Ermey to play Sergeant Hartman. I have two starting quarterbacks. I need to choose one. I don't know if you'd be interested in this idea, but I'd like you to stay on and play the helicopter door gunner, which is a very powerful role and a very powerful scene. Sincerely, Stanley Kubrick. So... That's the way he wrote me a letter, and I wrote him back a letter. You think it's hard for you to tell me. It's hard for me to accept it. You want to write me a letter? Here's my letter. You give me three minutes of your time. If I can't do exactly what you want me to do, I can go back to California with a clear conscience. As far as the door gunner role is concerned, just as a painter loves to paint and a singer loves to sing, I'm an actor who loves to act, and nobody can do this role better than I. Very depressed Tim Colseri. No. Three days went by. Leon says, he got your letter today. He's very hurt. He should He's be hurt. hurt. He hurt me. Why am I always talking to you? Wham! I slammed down the phone. You're like eight months. Oh, it was a I, mess. I gave you eight months. Oh, yeah. You to just break up and be like, oh, oh yeah, I know. I'm going to go out with your best friend. So no, 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 you don't get to do nobody that. Nobody knows this stuff, you know. So, and I did play the drill instructor 17 years later on Weeds. I played a lot of drill instructor roles, but that was. It's almost like it's 
I had it planned. Like salt in the wound, though, every time. Uh, you're like, mm-hmm. Well, they made dolls of him. Made, when I went to his funeral, they talked about his whole life changed when he got that role. That could have been the same thing for me. My life would have been completely changed. Mm-hmm. I'm still very, very lucky and very humble to be where I am. I'm very lucky that I got to play in that movie. And so thankful I got to be a Marine that played in that movie. And so was he. So we, we bonded as Marines because we were the only two Marines that were in the movie. And... Uh, but it was difficult to be best friends because he took my dream role away. And he didn't care. He wanted to. He cared. He didn't care. No, he didn't I found, care. I found out later. I found out later when he passed away, he, he said a lot of good things about me. It made me feel bad because. But, okay, so he auditioned for the role you had already had. No, he didn't even audition. He, sent he put himself tape. on tape. See, that's where it's sneaky. Yeah. So he people was your come, friend. He knew you had the role. He was never my friend. He was the technical advisor. The only friend with me was because I was a Marine. Wait, he respected me he as a Marine. He was already on the set? Yeah, as a technical advisor. But he started filming himself as my drill instructor role and improving his improvs as a drill instructor. And that was brilliant stuff he did. And that made Stanley interested. So they took the role away. So it's, it made him his career. And I can't say, I can't say enough how lucky I was still to be in the movie. I almost was not even in the movie. So I'm very proud that I got to be in it, and luckily that it, it, it turned... This movie's going to play when I'm dead. It's a classic war film. It's one of the best war films ever made, you know? There's so many great scenes in it. But I'm in one of those scenes where I can't tell you, everybody comes up and they remember some of my lines or all of them. They remember a few of them. Everybody does. Get Some is in a lot of movies since I made it famous, really, or the writer made it. I made it famous as an actor. What's interesting, one of my... Old roommates got pulled over by a cop in Denver, and he told him he was the door gunner, and the guy let him go. <laughs> Sneaky. Yeah. Wonderful. So anyway, that's, that's a long version of it. I, I mean, not too many people know it, and I hope I didn't sound like I wasn't proud to be in the no, movie because I was very much we're proud. we're very much appreciative of the opportunity that you were given yeah. for that, and afterwards. Yeah. What did it lead to afterwards? You're obviously well, gosh, teaching. I've done 60 films. I've done uh, Babylon 5. I got to play in a movie called uh, Leprechaun in Space with uh, and the, the, the director, Brian Trenchard Smith, knew Lee Ermey, and Lee Ermey's agent didn't want him to play any more drill instructor roles. So I got the role, but I turned into a woman, and I, and I, and I improv a lot. I had a lot of fun playing this role. That was a lot of fun. I was in Babylon 5, Eraser, uh, Razor Tooth, Evolution. I've directed two or three feature films. I've done about four shorts. I've been in voiceover for cartoons. So did it spark your career? Or Yeah, I think if I look back, I hustled. I think it opened a lot of doors. Uh, A lot of times they expect you because you've worked with Stanley Kubrick to be something that you're really not. Um, I hustled. If I look back at my career, though, if I had one thing to change, I would have got a better team helping me. Since I got the role by sending my own tape, I never had a good agent. And when I had Ed LaMotta as my agent from ICM, after Full Metal Jacket, I felt like he was doing me a favor, so I didn't want him to represent me anymore until I felt like I deserved it. And by the time I felt like my credits were good enough, he no longer even got breakdowns. He just makes phone calls. And uh, he was way too big for me by that time. I didn't parlay parlay it into something like I should have. But anyway, I'm, I'm lucky that I, I got what I did, you know, I'm proud of what I did. When Lee passed away, they had at the Leathernecks Club in Vegas, it's a Marine Corps bar, they showed Full Metal Jacket and they asked me to come speak afterwards and somebody said, how did you get the role? And I was drinking a beer and I started talking about the story and flight attendant and my Marine experiences and I started to talk for like 45 minutes and somebody said, you ought to do a one-man show. Well, Rafter man, Kevin Major Howard, who was in the plane helicopter puking while I was shooting, watched me do it. He says, I want to produce it. So for the last four months, we have been rehearsing to do a one-man show called God Bless You, Stanley Kubrick, Wherever You Are. Oh, that's amazing. And we're really close. And it's a lot of the half, the last three quarters is Full Metal Jacket. The beginning is comedy, me as my, my Marine Corps experiences as a flight attendant, my stories, uh, how I got the role, what I told you. And um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good to get it off my chest in case I do pass away. Everybody will be able to at least see that. And I think it's going to be good. I, I'm really excited about doing it. So uh, maybe it'll continue on, you know. So it's going to be a one-man stage. show. Yeah. And are and you looking in New York or L.A.? Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to premiere here in L.A. 
We're going to do one in Vegas. We're going to military bases, uh, you know, uh, cruise ships. Uh, it's amazing. I was in Lima, Ohio. I told these stories, and they want me to come back. It, the hardest part is editing. I have too many stories to edit down what will work for the show. And with lighting and with music, remember the song that goes, ba um mao mao ba ba um mao mao We have that cut with Mike. Get some! Get some! ba 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 um mao mao How do you shoot women and children? ba 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 Easy! You just don't lead them so much. <laughs> Ain't war hell! And then you, you go, well, you ought to do a story about me sometime. And it cracks to stop, and you hear Nixon, my fellow Americans, he says, wait, I'm going to talk to you about something very important, the Vietnam War. And then, it, and then it goes to black, and I'm standing there, and I stop up, and I'm in the drill instructor outfit, and I become Sergeant Hartman, and I do the drill instructor. And I do that, pages 1 through 28, which I didn't tell you. When I got off the plane in London, I had a pager, Stanley Cooper, paged me and said, Tim, learn pages 1 through 28. Driver will pick up tomorrow at 7. And I do those. Tw- I'm going to do them tonight. Oh, my God. 1 through 28. And... Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Once you memorize it, it, it's there. But when I memorized what they gave me, Lee put his improvs. So it's not going to be exactly like Full Metal Jacket. It's going to be like what I memorized. And afterwards, I go, they paid me $36,000 just to memorize that. And then I do Weeds as a drill instructor, which is great dialogue. And then I do some comedy. And then I go into my experiences of the Marines when I was a Marine. That's really funny. That guy was just getting his hair cut. He went, take a little off the sides. What? Give him the target cut. And they cut his head into a bullseye. Oh, and the no. first week, they go, private bullseye. And he goes, sir, private bullseye. Report on me order, sir. And they smack him in the head. Oh. So it's got comedy. And, you know, but it's also got, I'm putting this in. Take off those slimy civilian clothes. Put on those nice green ones and put those clothes in the box and mail them home. Nobody showed the mother opening that box. In my screenplay, that's a heavy scene. And to make it stronger, when he was shaving the hair, he nicked his ear and he touched it and got blood and wiped it across his shirt. So now she opens the box and sees a white T-shirt with blood on it. What the hell happened to my boy? Uh Nobody showed those kind of scenes. And these are the kind of things that I was going through back in 1969. You're going to go back to Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin. It's going to be a hopeless show. I don't want them to think that they saw a guy tell stories. I want them to feel like they saw a show. And that's what I want. And we're getting close. So I don't know if this can help. Hope you guys can come see it sometime. Most definitely. And where should everyone be able to find you? Look, oh, Facebook, oh, YouTube, all the above, a, your classes. I Here, tell. Have, what the heck do I, I don't know. I have a website now. I don't even know. Wait, I've never, know. I've never been to it. You? Where's my thing? Tim Colseri. Dot, does that say I can't read it? I have Tim Colseri, actor, acting coach, comic, director, what's writer. This, what's this say over here? Website, timcolseri.com. Check him out.